Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another Fallout uh, video here. So in this one here, I wanted to talk about episode 3, break down the whole episode. I really, really enjoyed this episode. I think this episode perfectly set up, I think, the next part here of the story. I would say that episode 2 would still be my favorite so far of the three, but still really enjoyed episode 3. A lot of really cool, like, Easter eggs to the games and stuff like that. I mean, every episode has sort of had that, but it just seems like every episode I watch, there's always, like, these newer things that I'm finding. And, I mean, literally in this episode, you actually see the the yum-yum deviled eggs. Like, that's so amazing. The box it's in and everything. Like, there's so many details to this show that... If you've played the games, it's it's so rewarding to watch. So, yeah. Anyways, definitely make sure to be a subscriber if you do want to get all my Fallout videos like this. I did post my episode 2 uh, uh, breakdown already. Not a lot of people saw it because I did post it pretty late at night. And, uh, yeah, these reviews are definitely taking a lot longer than I expected for sure. But I, I for sure should have all of my reviews done by the end of Sunday. So that's sort of my, my plan right now. Today I should have episodes 3 and 4 maybe even episode five out. And then I only have three more episodes. And so I could technically get all of those done tomorrow. But I'm just saying, just in case I end up getting maybe like only three and four done today. And then tomorrow's five and six. And then the next day would have to be seven and eight kind of thing, right? Like for sure, by the end of Sunday, I'll have all my reviews and breakdowns of each episode out. So uh, yeah, definitely. If you're interested and you do want to get all my breakdowns for uh, Fallout, then uh, definitely make sure to be a subscriber. There's going to be a lot to talk about. Like I'm really excited to actually finish the series and see what they set up for season two. And I just want to know more about the story and stuff like that and I just want to see you know if just a lot of what people are complaining about just you know does it make sense in terms of the story and it's a lot of fun actually watching this because I'm remembering so much from just like the world in general of Fallout so this episode obviously is uh I mean I like the fact that we do get these flashbacks here and there and obviously the the flashbacks obviously go back to a time before the nukes actually dropped and uh we do see Cooper He's an actor. I was kind of suspecting that he was going to be an actor because it seemed like that's what they were doing. I didn't really know, but in episode one, it kind of seemed like everyone knew who he was. And so I was like, he must be famous in some way. Kind of seems like he could be an actor. I'm not entirely sure, but he was definitely very popular. We do see here that, yes, he was an actor. And uh, yeah, I thought that was a really cool uh, backstory to the character here. There's actually a very cool element to his backstory. And that's sort of where this episode ends. But we'll, we'll talk about that once we get there. Cooper, or I guess the ghoul, as, as we now know him, uh, actually finds out where the scientist and, and Lucy were. And uh, obviously, then we do see Lucy traveling with uh, Will Zig. And uh, maybe by the Ink Spots was actually playing uh, one of my favorite songs of just really of all time. Like, honestly, I, I enjoy that song so, so much. The Ink Spots are a really incredible backstory. Man. There's actually a couple songs that they actually played in this episode specifically. And again, as I mentioned before, we do see the yum yum deviled eggs. So yeah, just really cool to see that. Maximus in this episode, we see trying to fix his armor, obviously. And uh, yeah, he gets a call from the Brotherhood. And uh, he lies about what happened and just, uh, you know, he's just like, well, the squire died and this and that. And also, by the way, he's faking that he's uh, the actual Knight Titus. Like, he's pretending to actually be Titus, which I, I personally was kind of like wondering about. I was like, why are you lying about that? Like. I feel like if you just told the truth as to what happened, you should be fine. Unless there's, like, a code where, like, the squire needs to defend, you know, the the knight at, like, all costs, you know, and sort of give your life up before, you know, like, the actual knight or lord or whatever dies, right? So I wonder if there's some sort of code there, so maybe that's why he knew he wasn't going to get away with that, so maybe that's why he's lying here. But, yeah, the Brotherhood of Steel do say that they're going to send him a new squire, so now he's just like, oh, okay, I don't know what I'm going to do now. But he eventually gets to repair for his suit and then notices some raiders uh, looking at his armor. I think that whole fight scene and just what happened there, the way that they told the story here is what really makes me excited about this show, is that it is just a really incredible show, honestly. Like, you could have just, like, ended the scene there. You could have done something else with the story in terms of just, like, writing it. But I love the way it plays out. He sort of loses his first fight with them, gets knocked out. You think this scene's going to be over, you know, and just, like, they'll cut to something else. And, no, I guess in the script, it's like, no, they're going to continue with this moment, right? Like, there's so much in each episode of this series that it, it's really, really entertaining. And, and they give you a lot in terms of the story. So having Maximus just get up again and then, you know, get into another fight and all that and just sort of, again, that whole thing, like that felt like that could have been a bigger part of the episode, but it was just such a small part of the episode because yeah, then he just gets his armor back and then obviously the Raiders uh, eventually just kind of leave. And um, yeah, I will say, I think Maximus is probably my favorite character right now. I think out of all three characters, like the three main leads, there's Lucy, uh, the ghoul and Maximus. Maximus, I think, is probably my favorite character as of now. We'll have to wait and see where the series goes, obviously, but 
Right now, I'm kind of thinking that he's my favorite character. I really do like his storyline. I really do like Lucy as well, but Maximus, to me, I just think he's a really amazing character. And uh, yeah, I'm interested in seeing where his storyline goes here in this season. But yeah, his squire does show up right away. And so now he's got to fake who he is just sort of in general. Uh, his squire's name is Thaddeus, so there's that. There's actually a lot of funny stuff that does happen in this episode with with uh, his squire, but yeah, a really interesting dynamic between the two characters, and uh, yeah, we'll see where that goes as we go on from episode to episode. We see Lucy. She goes through uh, Hollywood. We do see a sign that says Hollywood Boulevard, so I guess Hollywood is just totally gone now. Uh, the gulper actually shows up here. I, I really liked hearing the the rad meter going up. Like to me, when you hear that sound, I know that's technically a sound that happens whenever there's radiation around, like rad detectors in general make that sound. But for me, I associate that with follow because that was the first time I really ever heard that. And so, yeah, whenever I hear that, I'm just like, oh, like it really does feel like, you know, like you do have to be aware of all this stuff. And I'm just waiting for the moment in this episode when, you know, we're introduced to things like rad away and stuff like that. Like that's or not in this episode, but in this series, like I, I really can't wait for that. But the ghoul does find Lucy and then you're just kind of left wondering, oh, what's going to happen now? And then we cut to some stuff that's happening in Vault 33, which is kind of interesting because personally, I thought they were going to ignore a lot of what was happening in like Vault 33 and all of that. But no, I guess there is sort of a, a story actually happening here. And they're wondering what to do with the Raiders here. And they're sort of upset with i believe that's lucy's brother yeah they're upset with him because obviously he let lucy go and uh you know that could have you know endangered all of them there because that's how raiders are getting in and we also learned that vault 33 is connected with 32 i mean we already knew that but also with 31 so there's another vault we don't know who they are yet or anything so that's gonna be i'm sure we're probably gonna learn more eventually there's some water issues that they're having there so i wonder if they're gonna reach out for for help from vault 31 but yeah like they're wondering what to do with the raiders and it's sort of one of those things where they're trying to like this is sort of your typical walking dead argument i feel like where it's like you know they found us they they know how to get into our community they know some stuff about our community now you know, we can't just let them go because they could bring more people back and they're going to be a threat. So what do we do, right? This is sort of the argument in season two of The Walking Dead where you had Randall show up and Shane, you know, wanted to obviously get rid of him. But Rick, or I guess Dale specifically, was like, no, we can't do that. But everyone was like, no, like we have to get rid of him because he can alert other people. They can come back here to the farm. So it's sort of that same argument, like, what do you do here? And obviously looking back at that and you just sort of see where The Walking Dead story went overall. I think Shane was right, right? Like Shane, in terms of trying to keep this place safe, he was right. And it's, it's you know, it's a, it's a horrible thing, but this is just sort of the new world now, right? And I think in this world here, it's interesting because you look at the vault dwellers and they're very much, you know, a representation of the old world and just sort of that way of thinking, you know, like it's not even, they can't even comprehend the idea of like, oh, we're going to have to kill this guy now, right? Or kill, I guess, all of the raiders. Like, there, there's just there's no way in their minds that they're going to be able to do that. But uh, Lucy's brother, um, or at least I believe it's her brother, he's just like, well, no, like we have to do that. And obviously there there are some people within the vault that, that do want to do that. So I think because they're having resource issues and stuff like that, I think that's probably where they're going to be you know, going to at some point here in the next couple of episodes. So, uh, yeah, very interesting storyline here. But we do see Lucy being used as bait by the ghoul to get the gulper to come back and uh yeah the gulper looks insane the visuals here just really really incredible um i don't remember the gulper being this big compared to the game but i guess that's just sort of something that they're just adding here to the, to the tv show maybe i'm wrong i have no idea but yeah i think this whole sequence here was really incredible just learning the you know the new dynamic here between the ghoul and lucy and I'm wondering where they're going because this episode sort of ends with them just kind of walking off and you're wondering like where are they going next I don't really know uh you know I want to know like what the ghoul's intentions are you know with Will Zig is it just sort of a bounty like what exactly is he is he doing here and we are learning a lot more of his backstory here you know just a lot of what happened to him and it was actually kind of interesting to see that you know uh, Lucy actually even mentions there at the very end that is that what happened to you you know too much radiation sort of thing and he was just like yeah something like that <laughs> but yeah we see Maximus and uh yeah he does make it to uh I guess where Lucy and the ghoul just were so Maximus is very very close to them he makes it to Hollywood I guess or Hollywood Boulevard and uh yeah, then the gulper shows up, and then just, wow, I think that whole fight was incredible. Uh, they defeat the gulper, and then they actually find Wilzig. So, kind of a cool way in terms of transitioning, you know, the storyline a little bit here, because you're really keeping all three characters connected. 
yeah, just as the ghoul and Lucy are leaving now, I'm not sure how they're going to get involved with uh, Maximus again and how that's all going to happen here. But yeah, I guess where he's at right now, he could just give, uh, you know, Will Zig to, to the Brotherhood now. So just, you know, what happens there? And obviously, I think with Maximus, I mean, he has a lot of thinking to do here, right? Because like, what is he going to do for himself personally? As of right now, I haven't watched episode four or five. I feel like he's probably not going to do that. And if anything, he might use Will Zig and try to get some sort of personal gain from that, I would say. I mean, it looked like he did actually find uh, Lucy's boot. So I'm wondering if, you know, he's going to try and find her again. I'm not entirely sure. But but then we get to like the final scene and we do see uh, Cooper actually put on the vault suit. And yeah, he meets with vault Tech and they're doing an ad for vault Tech and all of that. And again, crazy backstory that he was actually a part of this. And this is sort of the advertisements for, you know, everyone trying to get into these vaults and all that, because obviously uh, vault tech and, and everyone sort of knew that, you know, the, the end of the world, I guess, was probably going to happen. And so they wanted to do this. And again, there was a lot of experiments that went on uh, and other things and stuff. And so this was sort of the, the start to it here. But Cooper was actually a big part in promoting all of it, which is kind of hilarious, just considering who he is now, right? And he also does the thumbs up. So I'm like, whoa, is he actually the origin of that? Is that what they're doing here in the show? Really, really cool. Um, Again, very phenomenal episode. I think this episode, it was just sort of a, I don't want to say it was like a downtime episode because obviously a lot of stuff happened, but it explored a lot of uh, character stuff. There was a lot of fun character backstory here. And uh, now we sort of know where our characters are going. And again, it's just sort of a, a mission that we're on, right? Like it feels very much like a video game. Like there's all these different parts of the story and they have this destination that, the, that they're going to and stuff. And so I'm excited to watch episode four. I'm going to post this review and I'll probably actually do a Walking Dead video after this. But after that, then I'll get to work on my uh, episode four review and then episode five after that. So yeah, stay tuned for all of that. Definitely make sure to be a subscriber if you do want to get more follow-up videos like this. And yeah, post your review down below for episode three. Hope you guys all enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.